Hello, I'm Phil Ernest, and I'm hiking the mountain high atop the Eagle Glen Golf Course in Corona. On today's hike, I'll be hiking past an active beehive, as well as enjoying a beautiful view of the city below. To find the trailhead in the city of Corona, exit off the 15 freeway on Eagle Glen Parkway and go west for 1.7 miles. At the end of the road, you'll see Eagle Glen Golf Course. You'll have arrived at your destination. Pull into the parking lot on your left-hand side and you will be one step closer to finding the trailhead. This is the lodge where people come to relax and enjoy after a round of golf. They also serve an excellent breakfast, which many of the hikers enjoy eating after a long hike. At the end of the parking lot, there's an asphalt driveway going down to the trailhead. Notice that mountain high atop there where the golfers are playing? That's where I will be heading for this hike. As I continue down the asphalt driveway, to the very end of it, I will see a dirt road. That's where the starting point is. Along the way, there's many pretty wildflowers growing, blowing in the wind. For about 200 yards, I carry on walking on this trail until I get to the end of the road. It's at this point when I take a hard left right along the chain link fence and straight on down the trail. From that point, it's as simple as following the trail ahead of you. Turn right and then another left and continue right on up that ledge right there. Right now it's springtime in Southern California and that can only mean one thing. The California native wildflowers are in full bloom and there are an assortment of them along this trail. It's at this point of the hike when I start to have a little bit of an incline going up the fire road. A point I didn't mention is that this hike is an up and back, which means you're coming up the same trail that you're going back on. As I come to the end of this part, right there at the gate, I will take a hard right and continue on up the trail. As I said, this hike is an up and back, if you stay only on the fire road. However, I will be going off the fire road for a short period of time actually halfway through the hike and then looping on back down to where I started from. I will show you when I do that as I approach it. Now that that initial incline is done, there's a bit of a break for about the next 500 yards. It's pretty level walking towards the mountain. If you like this type of content and would like to see more of it, please don't hesitate to hit the subscribe button. At this point, continue going straight on up to that trail as it inclines. This is a bit of an incline, so if you have your hiking poles, you may want to use them here. Especially since the gravel tends to give a little bit more here, and people have been prone to slip, particularly when they're coming down. But for right now, it's onward and upward as we head on straight on up the mountain. After getting past the little incline, be sure to turn right and continue straight on up the fire road. And now for the sad reality. At one point, this was a green fairway, active golf course with many golfers on it. Now it's sadly been reduced to a pond full of algae and mosquitoes. I can hardly imagine how these people felt buying their real estate close to a golf course only to find out it would go abandoned a few years after they bought their property. As I continue up the fire road, I'm now halfway to the summit and that turnoff point to do the loop. But I did find something very disturbing along the way. Somebody used the trailhead as a dumping ground. At this part of the hike, there is a turnoff to the left. Continue going straight on up the right-hand side of the trail. At this point of the hike, I'm now halfway to the turnaround area. Notice the skinny hiking trail going right up the side of this hill. Some hikers like to take this as a shortcut to the turnaround area. I recommend not doing it, and I will show you why. Notice right in the middle of the trail, the bush is blocking the path from going to the top. The only other option is to go around it and run the risk of falling off of that ledge like I did witness a lady do one time, or just say, forget it, I'm gonna continue hiking straight on up the fire road as I'm doing here, and there's another cutoff point that you can do probably about another 200 yards up the fire road. So that's what I'm gonna do today. Take it on the safe side. 
There were some motorbikes on this trail, something I had not seen in the past. And after about 10 minutes more of hiking on the fire road, I finally approached the cutoff point. This is where the loop begins. Notice the white gate there. That's where you want to go off of that fire road onto this little hiking trail if you want to do the shortcut, as they call it. It's a lot more manageable and easier to climb than that other one that I was showing you about 100 yards down the uh, fire road. Another advantage of taking the smaller trail rather than going on the fire road is you don't have to deal with the motor vehicles, the motorbikes and the trucks that go up and down that fire road right there down below. So it's safe to say this trail is a lot more hiker friendly because you're not having to deal with the extracurricular things that go on on the fire road. In addition, you get some nice views of the city below as you begin to incline up the hill. And now for an up close look at the golf course down below. Take a look at the trail to the right and the trail to the left. The one to the right is that steeper dangerous part. The one to the left is the trail I just came up on. Now that both of the trails has intersected into one, whichever trail you take, you'll be both on the same trail going to the turnaround area. One of the remarkable things that I found about this trail is that it is in really good shape considering it was closed for a couple of months due to the pandemic. The wildflowers are in full bloom and the trail is not as overgrown as I thought it would have been. I've now been on this skinny little hiking trail for a little bit more than 20 minutes and I come upon a working beehive where the bees are hard at work producing honey. I am careful not to annoy or pester or bother the bees as I quickly make my way past the beehive and staying on the trail. And after passing the beehives, I'm now only about 150 yards from the fire road and the turnaround point. As I've reached it, I turn right there. Looking back, that's the trail I was just on and the beehives in the background. Once I hit the fire road, I turn right and from this point, it's all downhill enjoying the scenery along the way. As you start to make your way back along the fire road, it's easy to be distracted by the view. Up ahead is Mount Baldy. Proceed with caution around this corner for there are little pebbles and rocks along the way where you will lose your footing and take a tumble if you are not paying attention. So please proceed with caution, keeping your eyes on the trail. This is the San Gabriel Mountains. Last week, I did a hike on this mountain called the Barrette Starter Trail. If you're interested in seeing that video, click on the link so you can watch it and learn that trail as well. And looking at this mountain, just a few short miles away is the Skyline Trail where you can hike to the Doppler Ball. You are now looking at the city of Corona high atop the mountain. As my hike starts to wind on down, take a look at the trail that I will be hiking from a distance. Notice where the two slopes come together? That's where I started going up the mountain off the fire road. And from a distance, I can hear the roaring engines of the motorbikes making their way up the fire road. So this officially concludes the loop part of this hike. From here on out, all of the rest of this hike that I will be doing is what I covered going on up the trail. If you've made it this far into the video, you now have seen all of the twists and turns that this trail has to offer. If you would like to do this hike, but you don't want to hike it alone, you are more than welcome to come and hike with a hiking group that does this hike on the last Sunday of every month. They are a group of friendly people, anywhere from 10 to 30 of them meet on a Sunday at 7 a.m. It takes them one hour to get from the parking lot of the golf course to the turnaround area, and then they rest for a little bit and they're back down at the golf course around 9 a.m. Afterwards, they go to the lodge at the golf course and enjoy breakfast together. Hiking leader Dave has come up with a good idea that he calls the breakfast lottery. What that is, is everybody pitches $1 in when you place your order. If you are the last person to have your food brought to you, then you win all of the money that is in the pot, thus making you the breakfast lottery winner. 
If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Also, if you'd like to see more of this type of content, please subscribe to the channel. I have a new video posted every week. Thank you so much for watching.